scattered about the North Sea, some more than 100 miles from land, a score of drilling rigs are working flat out in their search below the seabed for more and more sources of natural gas. On board each rig, 50 to 60 men live and work. There's a mass of heavy and complicated equipment, and drilling goes on round the clock, 24 hours a day. Offshore drilling in the North Sea, with the problems of changing crews and bringing out supplies, especially during bad weather, is proving to be one of the world's more expensive exploration exercises. Each rig costs about £9,000 a day to operate, so nothing can be allowed to hold up drilling. In charge of this rig for the operating company is 51-year-old Charlie Long from Texas. He's linked by radio phone to his shore base at Yarmouth and to the duty officer at home at night. Hello. Uh, hello, Brendan. Uh, this is Charlie Long on the Orion. Hello there, Charlie. What's the trouble? Brennan, what I would like for you to do is get to Slumber J Free Point out here on a chopper the first thing in the morning. When some special equipment is needed on the rig, there's no time to waste. I sent the Free Point indicator on the Slumber J man and they uh, back off shot. Your chopper has gone on a long flight. You're going to have to reschedule everything else today. And you the shore base morning conference includes movements for the fleet of ships and helicopters that shuttle to and fro between the three rigs operated by this company in the North Sea and their Yarmouth base. For safety reasons, one tender is always anchored near each rig, while the others are in harbour loading up with heavy supplies. For servicing its three rigs, this company operates five of these specially built tenders. Yarmouth Heliport, complete with customs office for clearing incoming rig crews, is now like a miniature London airport, with its fleet of helicopters flying from dawn till dusk. These choppers handle the weekly crew changes, take out visiting engineers and VIPs, deliver a crate of eggs, the mail, bring back samples of rock core for analysis. A taxi service for the North Sea rigs at £200 an hour. This rig is 50 miles from Yarmouth. These men and supplies have taken 40 minutes to get out there. At the far end of the rig from the landing pad is the drilling floor with its 300-foot derrick towering above it. Of the 60-men crew on this rig, which was built on the Clyde but is owned and operated by an American-based company, the eight key men are Americans. The rest are British. Most of the crew are on shift work, 12 hours on, 12 hours off, seven days a week. They do two weeks on the rig, and then a week unpaid ashore. The supply tender's biggest problem is getting close in to the rig without damaging itself. In winter, it's sometimes impossible for days at a time. So the rig always carries at least a month's supply of stores and has a plant for converting seawater into fresh water. What most of the men like about working on a rig is the one week off in three. 
One of them had to work seven days every week as a lorry driver to earn the same as he's getting now. Mike Moore was a steward in the Merchant Navy. Working on the rig floor, as I do, can be dangerous if you're new to it. But if you do not keep your wits about you, you could have a bad accident. British lads like John Griever, working on the drilling floor, earn about 50 pounds a week. They call the chaps who work on the floor roughnecks. You get paid a little more for. It's very hard work and very dangerous. One of my best friends was permanently injured. There's danger, yes, but the drilling floor is the way to the top, financially. As the only geologist on board, I'm afraid I have to be on call 24 hours a day. This very often means being called out in the middle of the night. Last night I was hoping to get a full night's sleep, but we had a break in the rate of drilling and I had to go to see if this was significant and necessitated cutting a core or running a test. This is geologist Ricky Brown's first job. Bill Gittins is an old hand. After having 20 odd years as a radio officer in the Merchant Navy, this job on the oil rigs came up. I took it. Money's good, food is excellent, I like it. This rig is like a ship down below, but its legs are firmly planted on the seabed. Life for its crew is a round of work, eat and sleep. Drink is not allowed on board, but the food, say the men, is superb. They work 12-hour shifts. There's not a whole lot to do after they finish their 12-hour shift. Some of us play a little poker. I like to play myself. Yes, a little poker, a television, an occasional film show, time to read. And at least once a week, the fire or abandoned rig bell rings. Only the drilling crew on watch stay put. They've been warned that this is not the real thing. For nothing must hold up drilling. When the drill is down to the depth at which gas is expected, the rig is abuzz with anticipation. If a good pressure of gas is found, the hole is temporarily plugged, and then later a pipeline is laid from it along the seabed to the shore terminal, such as this one being built on the Norfolk coast. To pipe natural gas throughout the country and to convert Britain's 30-odd million gas appliances for its use will take 10 years at a cost of 400 million pounds. Started in 1967, the programme is already well underway. The remaining town gas in the pipelines is flared off. The gas men have already moved into the area that is to be converted. And street by street, house by house, each gas appliance is fitted with new jets. There's no charge to the consumer for this conversion work. Natural gas burns no hotter or cooks no more quickly than town gas, which is produced from oil or coal. But its discovery by these North Sea commuters is giving Britain a vast supply of natural energy on its own doorstep. The big question is, will this mean cheaper gas? They say it will.